Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please be seated. Folks, really good uh, to see you all this morning. You're very welcome uh, to our service, our family service this morning uh, here in St. Andrews. We do welcome, especially this morning, the Stevens and Potts family circles to gather for Harry's baptism a little, little later on in the service. Any visitors are especially welcome with us as well. Folks, most of uh, what you'll need will be on the screens uh, this morning. We'll need the prayer book for a part of the service. Just some announcements to give before uh, we go any further together. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Diocesan Fellowship of Vocation have asked that this uh, announcement be made this morning. They're having a meeting on the 12th of September in the Fergus Hall in Portadown at 7.15 p.m. That's this uh, Thursday, am I right? Not right, folks? My dates are right there. I think it's Thursday. Uh, or no, it'd be, be, yeah, it'd be Thursday. Thursday, 12th is Thursday, 7.15 p.m. in the Fergus Hall. That's for folks who are interested in any way. That's even if you have a smidgen of a thought toward uh, ministries in the Church of Ireland. Uh, generally, it's toward ordination, but it can be other ministries as well. So if you're thinking in any way it, there's no uh, commitment to that, you want to go along, you're very welcome to that on Thursday evening in the Fergus Hall at uh, 7.15 p.m. Epworth Playgroup are having another event, and this time it's the Belfast Community Gospel Choir. They will be in Craig Avon Civic Centre uh, on the 12th of October, beginning at 7.30 p.m. that night. It's £20 uh, to go. You need a ticket for it. They're available from the uh, Faith Mission Bookshop and also uh, the centre itself. So that's the 12th of October at 7.30, Epworth Playgroup, uh, presenting Belfast Community Gospel Choir. Also today, folks, uh, there's a collection for Armagh Orphan Society. There are very few envelopes, so they're actually in the porches. If you'd like to give, uh, use one of those. Uh, if you're a taxpayer for those, please, because they can be gift-aided. Uh, if you'd like to give and are not a taxpayer, uh, loose collection this morning will also go to the Arma Orphan Society. So feel free, excuse me, to uh, donate to that if you'd like to. It'll be the same uh, this evening service as well. Also, there are some extra newsletters from ICM, Irish Church Missions. Uh, they're out in the porches as a newsletter. If you'd like to catch up with what they're doing, feel free uh, to lift one of those on your way out as well. We turn to page 101 uh, in the prayer book. Begin with the greeting. The Lord be with you. We take a moment's silence to recollect our thoughts before the Lord. We are in his presence, things that have kept us from him in these last days particularly. But he's a gracious God, a God who will forgive us our sins, our wrongdoings in thought, word and deed if we come to him faithfully and truthfully. And so we say together the confession on page 102. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand to sing our first song this morning, In Christ Alone, which will be on the screens.
Please be seated. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 125. You can find it on page 745 in the prayer book. And we said in alternate half verse. That's Psalm 125 on page 745. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Which cannot be moved, but stands fast forever. As the hills stand about Jerusalem. So the Lord stands around the righteous people. From his time forth forevermore. The scepter of wickedness shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the righteous. Lest the righteous turn their hands to evil. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good. And to those who are true of heart. Those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord shall take away with the evildoers. But let there be peace upon Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As the Lord is in his mind, it shall be forever. Amen. Please remain seated as Lewis brings us our Bible reading this morning. <coughs> Mark 7, 24 to 37. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was Greek-born in Syrian Phoenicia, she begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. <clears throat> first, <clears throat> first let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply you may go, the demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. <coughs> Excuse me. Then she left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down the Sea of Galilee and into the region of Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside away from the crowd Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephapha, which means be open. At this the man's ears were opened and, he be and his tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Here ends the reading. Thanks very much, Lewis. Folks, we're going to stand and sing again in its our, and it's our children's songs at this stage. But first of all, uh, it's time for giving happy birthday. Anybody in church this morning have a birthday in the month of September? Anybody's, <laughs> sorry, anybody else? Or anybody owning up? Anybody, September folks? Oh, oh, very good, okay. Well, there's one or two of us anyway in September. So we're going to sing uh, the first verse of happy birthday to folks uh, who've had or are going to have a birthday uh, this month. And then the two children's songs, Jesus Loves Me, followed by Jesus' Love is Very Wonderful. And of course, we all know there's actions, isn't there, folks, to the second one? So, <laughs> Jesus' Love is Very Wonderful, and feel free to do that without knocking your neighbor uh, in the pew on the actions as well. So please stand uh, together and we'll sing Happy Birthday. <laughs>
God grant you peace in the midst of a storm. May God give you strength even when you're forlorn. May you answer the door when Jesus comes knocking. May wisdom guide when your mouth is talking. May discretion protect you and keep you pure. May you never stumble or fall for a lure. May your heart remain humble to the very end. May uprightness and truth be what you defend. May the world not ensnare or change who you are. May the light that's within you shine like the stars. May angels surround you, body, spirit, mind. May favor and peace be yours to find. May rejection and pain never reach you. May your spirit grow bold for what you're called to. As you rest in God's care, I will rest too, knowing that Jesus is watching over you. Amen. Folks, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you now at this time in the service as we look to your word. We pray that you will speak to us. Pray that our hearts and minds are open to hear what you're saying. Pray it's your words and your words alone that we hear and help us to respond to you in the power of the Holy Spirit. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I think uh, poor Lewis got a bit of a short straw this morning, folks. Not an easy reading at all, and quite a bit uh, of detail uh, in there. But I want to draw out uh, just this morning, folks, that these two passages, and they're two in one, really, are about healing. I'm sure you've noticed that, about healing. And the big question I want to throw out is, is it only people of faith that are healed? Is it only people of faith that are healed? Sometimes we think that if our faith is lacking in the Lord or we've no faith at all, somehow we may not be healed or healed as quick as someone with faith. Or you may know someone who's deeply in faith with the Lord and yet never healed. It's a difficult question. Is it only people of faith that get healing more than those who don't. We're going to look at these two stories this morning because they teach us different things. We're going to go back to front. We're going to deal with the deaf man, first of all. Chris, if you throw up the first slide, please, that would be great. Okay, children, what is that man doing? Jacob. Yes, yes. He's the fingers and the ears there, hasn't he? He doesn't want to hear what's going on around him there. Someone who's deaf or hard of hearing will have trouble hearing everything or maybe nothing at all. And it's not a very nice way to be for that particular person. This man is deaf, but also he cannot speak. 
Deaf and mute was the old word for it. You'll find it in some translations of the passage. Deaf and mute. Mute meaning he cannot speak. And a lot of people that I know who are deaf, they do have trouble being able to communicate verbally. Two things are connected. This particular man is of the house of faith. See, Jesus is present in Galilee with his own people. This man will most likely to be Jewish. In the region of the Decapolis. Decapolis means ten towns in the near vicinity. He's in Galilee. And this man is brought to Jesus who is deaf and has a speech impediment. And they beg him to lay his hand on him. Now obviously there's faith there to start with. That they think Jesus can help this man hear again. And Jesus goes ahead and heals him. It's hands on. He actually touches the man. Now part of it is a bit gross, to be honest. We're going to look at that as well. First of all, what does Jesus do? He puts his fingers into the man's ears. Just like that man on the screen a minute ago. He's almost popping. Get the, have you ever done that? Ever popped your ears, folks? Horrible feeling. Sometimes you might be going up in altitude, climbing a mountain even, it can happen. Or an airplane, you might find that popping thing happens in your ears. It's not very pleasant. But Jesus puts his fingers into the man's ears. And then he does something else a bit gross. Chris, we have an audio of this. <laughs> what did that sound to you like? It's actually an audio of somebody spitting. Oh dear, I hope nobody in church spits. It's not a very pleasant thing at all. Unless you do it very discreetly when something disgusting has gone into your mouth. But do not spit just for the sake of it. It's not very pleasant. When Jesus does this, first of all he puts his fingers in the man's ears. And then he spits and touches his tongue. Now you're starting to wonder, as Jesus spat into his hand and actually touched the man's tongue? Not very hygienic at all. But that's what Jesus does. And he looks up to heaven then. And he says, Ephatha, which means be opened. The man's ears are opened and his tongue is released. It's old fashioned talk for the man could now hear and speak again. It's a wonderful miracle. And the man has been healed. It's hands-on healing. He touches the man. And we believe the man is of the house of faith. So therefore, the question, is it only people of faith that are healed? Well, yes, obviously in that case. That is true. And Jesus goes on a little further here. He charges the people to tell no one. Chris, if we just pop up a slide for that, please. Okay, that lady's looking a bit stern there. Tell no one. And why do you think that is? This is a wonderful miracle. Surely people want to know about this. The people who are gathered see it, obviously. But he's telling all these people, I'm sure there's even more than is in church this morning was present at that healing, to tell them to go out and say nothing about this. Surely to goodness that would help Jesus' cause and get the message out there. Anybody know why he tells them to say nothing? <laughs> Nobody's going to have a guess at that one. Why does he tell them to say nothing? Well, this is only jargony bit of the talk, really. There's something in the Gospels called the Messianic Secret. The Messianic Secret. It wasn't the right time for Jesus to give away everything about himself yet. And that included healings and miracles. And all of that. Time's not right yet to tell others. You see, Jesus has to eventually go to the cross, as we know, and die for you and me, and to rise again. And he's to build up to that. The whole message of the gospel is not fully out at this stage. Because people will not be ready. It's called the messianic secrets. The fullness of who Jesus is. That he is God. 
and all the power of the Lord with him. But of course, the people cannot but help go and say. They don't listen to Jesus in that way. They go out with such excitement and astonishment and zealous is in there too. Somebody being very passionate for speaking about what Jesus has done. Now, folks, we're going to move from that healing to a very different healing earlier in the passage. This is a foreign lady this time, Syrophoenicia, which is very much north of Israel in those days, probably in modern-day Syria today. Tyre and Sidon were the main towns and cities in that area. People who would not have had the Jewish faith, people who would not have believed in the true God, foreigners, people with other sorts of stone gods and all this sort of stuff, people who would not have mixed with Galileans. But Jesus there in verse 24 of Mark 7, from there he rises and goes to Tyre and Sidon. He enters a house and does not want anyone to know. Chris, if we throw the next slide, please. And he could not be hidden. There's a man looking out of a window. It's a bit like what Jesus was doing here in the region of Tyre and Sidon. He goes into a house. Doesn't want anybody to know he's there. So he's going to try and hide. But probably observing as well what's going on outside. See, probably the message of Jesus has gone even into foreign territory. Because we read that about this woman She has some sort of a faith in what Jesus can do. Or she simply has heard of the brilliance of his healing. And she's trying it to see what happens. Immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit hears of Jesus. Doesn't say she trusts in him. She hears about him. Comes and falls down at Jesus' feet. Chris, if we throw the next slide, thanks. Probably a similar situation to that. The woman's desperate. She has her little girl, an unclean spirit. Now, we might say to ourselves, folks, well, the wee girl will be all right once that comes out, but an unclean spirit can kill a person. It's very serious. We call it today demonic activity within a person. It's one of those hush-hush types of thinking and theology and ministry, but it's very, very real. And back in these days, it's just as real. An unclean spirit could have killed a little girl, not a problem. So it's just as serious, if not even more serious, than the man who couldn't hear and speak. She's falling at his feet. She's desperate. She hears, remember, of Jesus. She's a lady not of the faith. And she comes. She's a Gentile. It's in there in the passage. Meaning non-Jewish. A Syrophoenician by birth. She begs him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And then this famous, famous retort. Verse 27. Jesus, in his wisdom, let the children be fed first. For it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now you're probably thinking, what on earth does that mean? Are there dogs about this time? And what's going on here? The children are the house of Israel. The people that Jesus was going to first with the gospel. And interestingly, those outside of that are called dogs. Not a very nice thing to say to anybody. You're a dog. Those people outside of the house of Israel are the dogs in that statement. It's not right to take the children's bread. In other words, the gospel that I'm bringing to the house of Israel first to give it to you, a foreigner, someone not of faith in the true God. But look at the lady's answer. Verse 28, yes, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. So there you see, this lady has such belief now, such desire, such desperation too, that she's willing to take anything of the Lord to heal her daughter. And it's that very response 
that Jesus says, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. Chris, just the next slide there. Okay, folks, there's a hungry looking fella. <laughs> Who's got dogs at home? Children. Young people. Who's got dogs? You've got dogs, guys. Yes, I'm sure most people have dogs. Now the adults have as well. Does he get as close as that at the dinner table? He does. <laughs> I know it's very hard to keep them back. They get spoiled very, very easily. And is he, or he or she, are they well behaved if they're looking at your dinner? Or are they going to take a chance and swipe the plate when you turn your, your head for a moment? <laughs> well, they're all different personalities, of course, or dogs. But there you are, folks. This wonderful statement the lady gives. I even want a little crumb of you, Jesus. Because I do, in my desperation, think you can heal my daughter. And then it's that moment, there's a faith transaction going on. Jesus knows that this lady now has full trust in him. It's spiritual. It's not just physical talking here and being smart with your statements. Something has happened and God is working. And the lady goes home. She finds the child lying in bed and the demon gone. This, folks, is hands off healing. Jesus hasn't even been in the house where the girl is. He hasn't laid his hands on her. He hasn't done anything miraculous. It's simply a response of faith the lady has that he is overwhelmed by. Of course, I'm going to heal the little girl. Two very different stories, folks. Hands-on healing with a person of the house of Israel, the in faith, if you will. And then a hands-off healing to a foreign girl. A girl most likely would have no faith in the Lord whatsoever. And yet, both are healed. So our question, is it only people of faith are healed? Of course it's not. There's people who are most adverse from God can be healed. For whatever reason, he decides to do. Our final slide. Thanks, Chris. Now, folks, if I was to say to you, this is a, this is a true picture of a landscape. Where that is, we could be here all day <laughs> trying to guess where that is, unless you've been there. It's a place called Buganyuzi. It's central Burundi in Africa. That's part of the area out there. I want to tell you a true story about something that happened there very recently in central Burundi about a man called Balthazar. He was a witch doctor in the area and many parts of Africa, unfortunately, witch doctoring and witch doctorship goes on. And they hold an awful authority within a community of people. People are afraid of them because what they do is always of the enemy. They have a certain power. It's not from God. It's from Satan. And Balthazar, one day he was approached by a community member. And the community member says, unless you stop what you're doing, we have no other way but to throw you out of the village. Balthazar didn't take it well. The next day, the man who approached him was dead. He had no faith or no health issues. Everybody wondered, how did he die? Well, remember, folks, the power of the enemy is very strong. But then the people went and they prayed in what was known as the Hill of Balthazar to pray against him. Not approach him, but to pray against him in the Lord's name. And Balthazar heard about it and he started to come with all all his power and strength and hatred towards the people once he knew what was happening. And as he was approaching them, he stopped and he completely broke down, fell on his knees and received the Lord as his Savior. No one can explain it. Something happened. A bit like the transaction of faith of the Syrophoenician woman, particularly about her daughter. No faith whatsoever, and yet healed. And folks, the greatest healing for you and I is that of salvation. 
don't know if you've ever thought about it like that. Sometimes you think of healing as mental, physical, emotional. Yes, it is those things as well. But the greatest healing of all is salvation. And anyone can have it. And that exactly proves that you don't have to have faith to be healed in that context. Because people who come and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior, they're non-believers before that. And they're healed with God's salvation. That's the greatest example of being healed by non-faith. God moves by His Spirit. The person is healed, given salvation. You know, folks, there may be people in church this morning who are suffering from different things. Physical things, emotional things, mental things. And we don't know if God will heal us or not. We don't know His greater will for all of us. There's a reason why we're not healed. And those of us who are healed, that is brilliant. Praise God for that. But you know, each and every one of us can have the healing of salvation. You can have that now. It's not an if or a might or a chance thing. You can have that one for sure. And that's the greatest healing of all. Because when our bodies eventually decay in this world, folks, there's heaven beyond for the soul which is indestructible. That part of us that lives on forever. And it's there. God's promises are there. The cross has done it. It's defeated the enemy forever. You and I can be set free, healed by God's salvation, which we all need. We repel it and hold it back at our peril. You and I can have it today if we don't already have it in our lives. The greatest healing of all, proving that only people of faith can be healed is wrong. People of non-faith are healed too. And I've seen many people come for physical ailments and spiritual ailments and emotional ailments and mental ailments who have no faith but are healed. Because the person praying with them is a Christian. That's all it takes. And the power of God can work through that channel. But today, folks, remember the gift of salvation, the greatest healing of all, healing of our sins and eternal life in Christ. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for faith. We thank you, Lord, that it is the driving force for the Christian, the person who puts their trust in you as their Savior. We thank you for the cross, Lord, that is the open door and the only door to salvation from this world and all its troubles and sins. And there's a place called heaven beyond. We thank you for Jesus, your son, who went to that cross to die, to open the door for our salvation, the greatest healing of all that everyone can have without question. And by your grace, we receive it, not through any merit of our own. Lord, we thank you that you're a God who heals in many different ways, but also chooses not to heal for reasons too that we may never know. But Lord, you of our welfare at heart, you know the will that you want to enact in this world, and your will always be done for each of us. But Lord, help us to remember above all of that in this world, no matter what we're suffering from, we can have the greatest healing and salvation and your peace. I pray we know that in our lives today, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Go and ask Corban to come forward again and lead us in our next song, 10,000 Reasons. Again, it'll be on the screens.
seated for prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do give thanks for your Son, Jesus, Saviour of the world, our Redeemer, the one who sets us free from sin. Lord, as we're born into this world, we fall into a sinful world and we're tainted with it. And we commit sins daily in our lives through word, thought, and deed. Lord, none of us is good enough to be in heaven. But we thank you for your Son who came to earth to show us the way. That there is a way out of this. And through the cross, the open door to salvation and eternal life. We receive you, Lord, as our Saviour. Because you have cleansed us from all wrong. And by your grace, that unmerited favor that you give to each one of us out of love, we can know eternal life and salvation through the cross. I pray that is our testimony today. Lord, we thank you for healing, that you're a God who still interacts in this world with people who suffer, people who suffer mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And we pray for healing who all who suffer today in all those different ways. If it's ourselves or someone who we know and love, we pray for your hand upon to come by your Holy Spirit power and bring healing. We thank you, Lord, that you heal people who are not even of faith, as well as those who are in faith. We don't know the reasons why you do or the reasons why you don't. But help our trust to be in you always. And to know the greatest healing that salvation brings. That above all, that is one we can have now. And when our earthly bodies pass and all its troubles, the healing of salvation carries us into glory. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray today for families on this family service. We pray for fathers and mothers. Pray for brothers and sisters, grandparents, our wider family circles, our friends, our neighbors, colleagues. We ask you to bless the family unit. We ask that your peace and presence to be in all homes in the parish and those connected to the parish. Father, we pray today for little Harry. Thank you for his baptism. We thank you for Jamie and Ruth, his parents, and his brother Henry. All the family circle, bless their home, and may your peace and presence always be there. And that Harry will grow up to be a strong and fit young man, and a young man who follows you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray for our world today, giving thanks for a beautiful world, and yet we pray against the troubles that are there. We pray for people who seek the lives of others through war and civil unrest and evils of different kinds. We remember the different link missionaries that we have here at the parish and where they're working. We remember those in Ukraine today, those in Gaza and Israel, and many other areas of the world are troubled. We pray for your healing. We pray for your peace. We pray for your comfort. And we pray for restoration of lives that have been destroyed. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we take a moment's silence to bring our own prayers before God's throne of grace. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. And we conclude our prayers by speaking God's grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now stand to sing our offertory hymn, You Can't Be a Beacon, and I'll be followed by the doxology.
Please be seated for prayer. Let us pray. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen.